Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, my name is Reese for Peace from KFC or Wookie Triple XL. And in today's, I'm about to get load shed in three hours review. I'm having a look at the Acer BGO270 panel from Acer and it's actually, yeah, it's good and stuff. In all seriousness, Acer's value right now is, well, that's pretty astronomically good really so i did the acer xp3 series last week which was our first review for the year with the 25 and 27 and those were rather good the price versus performance was exceptionally high and honestly this is really no different to that the vgo or the vg27 o or vgo27 that this is under is a more of a budget line kind of monitor just half the price of the xp20 of the xp327 at least but is it half the panel is the question and really it's not it is an ips 27 inch monitor it does have a 165 hertz refresh rate which is quite nice to have a little bit superfluous over 144 but faster is better 1080p as i said and a two millisecond response time it does also have free sync which is quite a nice to have the color gamut coverage is 72 percent of ntsc and it's a six bit panel so it's kind of average and standard for panels quality as far as colors etc goes it does however have hdr 10 or what they're calling hdr ready now there's a lot of talk about this being a con etc and that it's um, just taking an hdr signal and then converting it to sd and that's really not quite the truth of what's happening here so the hdr mode does actually work and it does actually make a difference so i've got it in the standard plane right now with mr lizard and it's this is on the standard color profile if you then up it or convert it to the hdr mode which i'm going to do now you'll notice that it does then pop out and then you have it in hdr ready hdr 10 mode it does make a significant difference to having that and the hdr mode was better than anything i could come up with myself trying to do custom setups on the monitors these have the exact same osd that the xb3s do have as well and pretty much the same sort of feature sets minus obviously things like g-sync and true hdr 400. all around though the hdr it, it actually does make a difference and it's a quite a nice touch to have especially on a what some would call a more budget panel it's a nice little add-on that boosts that color gamut and makes it just that but a little bit better hdr 400 is based on the fact that the screen can sustain a 400 nits or 400 candela meters squared lighting profile consistently per pixel uh this is only on 250 and i, I wasn't actually at a loss for brightness i turned it down a little bit honestly in the nvidia control panel just to make it the colors a bit richer and less washed out um, not that it, it does a bad job of washing them out because of the 250 nits it's actually got quite a good control on that and it took to digital vibrance and contrast really really nicely there was however a touch of rps glow as it was kind of eliminated by the hdr on the other panels on this panel i did get some of that glow factor but it wasn't so bad that it completely ruined the experience. The physical setup is quite basic in of itself as well, although they have carried over some of the nice things from the XB3, that being dual HDMI 2.0 ports, a 1.4 display, and then a 3.5 millimeter pass through on the port side of things. Then they have also included two little speakers, which is kind of a nice to have. So if you're in using this for like a console or something to that effect, which it would be ideal for, um, then you've got speakers on the go with you. So if you forget your headphones and you aren't able to use it off the pass through, then that will suffice. They're on about a par with most laptop speakers. So don't expect it to be a JBL concert. As I said, they've also simplified the stand. I do wish the neck was just a little bit higher. I did actually end up propping it up on top of a toolbox, which I just sat underneath it, which then gave me that eye line I like to. Sort of sit very up straight in front of the pc like that and not hunched over the monitor which you would have to do it does tilt considerably on the stand um, which is obviously nice to have for some comfort but i do wish that neck was just a little bit higher so that we could you know sit a bit more square on another feature that does actually work on these acer panels is the ultra sharp mode which is, is in now and that removes a lot of that 
graininess and fuzziness that you get from 1080p panels. I've experienced it on the XB3 and I thought, ah, this is probably a gimmick, let's try it out anyway. You know, while we're here, I might as well check all the boxes. And this was a good box to check because it, a function actually works and it is on this panel as well. The 1080p looks just that much better. It's kind of like having anti-aliasing, but on a hardware level for free included with the panel. Can't say I'm mad at that. Overall then, you would expect this panel to probably cost about 6,000 Rand with these kind of specs being a 27, 165 Hertz monitor as well. But Asus selling this at the moment for 4,700 Rand. That's kind of the same price as most entry level 24 inch 144s, which are TN panels. So they're not going to be as good for your eyes as the IPS. And with the HDR on the IPS, you're going to get better colors as well and then it's slightly faster, and then it's still got a two millisecond response time, and then there's the ultra sharp function. You can see where I'm kind of going with this. The overall value of these panels right now from Acer is exceptional. They've not only come back on like a premium sort of standpoint, but the value of this, even as an entry level panel, there is not a better 27 at the money. There is just not a better 27 inch at the money. If you're looking at 5K or less, this is pretty much the best large panel you can buy right now. And it's kind of staggering that with everything that it does do. Like I said, I think if the stand could have a longer neck, that's about the only thing I would change on this at this kind of price point. I'd also maybe like 300 nits brightness because you can't change that when you're on HDR mode. It maxes out your default brightness and then it then brightens up and dims based on the HDR's requirements. So. I would say 300 nits would make it just a little bit better as well. But look at the price. <laughs> Can you really complain? I, I submit that you cannot. And maybe a three-year warranty. Even if the price point was pushed out another 10 or 15%, I think it would be worth it because it would still be insanely competitive. And I, I hear you, South Africans. I know we love our three-year warranty. Anyway, that's all we have time for in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.